Hey there, welcome back to NASCAR Race Hub. I'm Lindsay Zarniak. So now is when we go behind the scenes, checking in with your favorite NASCAR drivers to find out how they're doing while they wait to get back to Cup Series racing. Today, I'm talking to Austin Dillon. So Austin's about to become a father for the first time. He's married to one of the most entertaining women on the planet. And I checked in with him to see how he's dealing with all this extra time off around the family. Here he is from his lake house in North Carolina. Austin Dillon, it's great to see you. What, what has it been like for you guys trying to social distance, but how has that been for you? Well, it's, um, you know, Whitney's got a baby on board right now, so we're doing our best to uh, social distance, and it's, it stinks. We're kind of, we're very so social people. So um, even our best friends, you have Paul and Mariel, um, if they go and do something, Whitney's pretty adamant about quarantining away from, from uh, our buddies. So we're uh, kind of out in the middle of nowhere just waiting for this stuff to pass. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little scary having a baby, but, um, you know, we're uh, prepared for it and, and looking forward to June. That's when he's due. What are you thinking about? What's on your mind about the impending fatherhood? Well, you know, it's uh, the way the schedule looks. We're going to be really busy. So that, about the time we have this, this kid, uh, I'm going to be having to go to the racetrack a lot. So I think we've got a good plan together. We've been trying to plan as much as we can to uh, be prepared for me being on the road a lot and um, having a baby at that, that time period. Are you, are you nervous about it? Are you feeling like you're, you're fully ready for what you're about to experience? Oh, well, I'm definitely a little nervous. I mean, the first time for anything, I think you're going to be nervous. And uh, I, I don't know what to expect yet. You know, it's kind of been one of those things where you just you jump in and I don't think anybody's ready for it. You just got to do it. Well, I can't wait to talk more about this when Whitney joins us in a little bit. But um, what has it been like for you and your race team? How have guys been trying to stay together and, and the whole team just in general? Well, some of the guys uh, are playing video games a lot. You know, um, a bunch of them went and bought Xboxes and uh, just texting Justin here and there. He's been uh, doing a good job. He's got a young kid also quarantining. So he's just been hanging out on the lake, fishing a little bit. Um, but not a lot's going on. You know, every, everybody's at home um, waiting for the time to go back to work. What's your approach been in terms of doing anything that you can to, to keep up on the racing or prepare yourself when it does come back? I know it's hard. And as well, you I said, shops are closed. I think the iRacing is the biggest thing, you know, um, just staying sharp behind the wheel and there's a lot of good things that you can do as far as looking at tracks and um messing with them. i'm gonna be if we go back and sonoma is one of our first races back i'm definitely going to be running a lot of i racing laps on that place to just try and get um the wherewithal so when we get there we're ready and kind of prepare because you know if we do go run two three races a week um you can prepare as much as you can now but when we start doing it we're going to be busy traveling back and forth yeah. and um trying to get to the track instead of preparing. And you're going to be extra busy. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's interesting watching the iRacing. I love how real the whole thing looks, right? But but honestly, from a driver's perspective, it, can it give you that much information? Does it feel as comparable to the real thing? Well, I think visually there's, there's a lot of things that you can take. The visual keys of the track, um, different lines. Um, the steering wheel and, and turning the wheel the way you do is, is not – as accurate as what we're going to run at the track or the brake pressure. And there's a lot of different tricks that make speed, but if you just take it as, as something you're trying to make yourself better and learn more about the track, then I think it's really good. Um, you can't really worry about the speed because you start worrying about the speed. You do things that you wouldn't do at the track to make yourself better. Um, okay. I can't wait to talk to you and Whitney together. I think it's so interesting to hear how these drivers are learning so much about themselves through the iRacing. If we're talking about an education, I loved hearing the story of how Austin Dillon and his wife Whitney's relationship first began, and you're going to love to hear the way they tell it together. That's coming up next on Race Up. Welcome back to NASCAR Race Hub. So most of us have seen Whitney and Austin Dillon on the grid together before the start of a race. The story, though, that she told me about the very first time she was at a racetrack, it was so funny, she made me laugh out loud. And I'm betting you're going to do the same thing. Whitney, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad that you could be here. How are you? I'm really good. Really pregnant, but really good. <laughs> well, yeah, so the due date um, for your son is June 21st, right? You said Father's Day. Father's Day, yes. So how has it been as you've been getting closer and closer? 
Well, I'm getting anxious now. I'm ready to have this baby. I'm ready to go racing. Um, you know, third trimester, everything just kind of slows down. So I am ready. The name Ace, yeah. I love it. Was was it hard for you guys to to settle that or to think of it? Oh no. Oh. Um we kind of knew that from early on. We wanted it to be Ace, right? Yeah. We I feel like we had this conversation really early in our relationship too. It's like Okay. There's you gotta tell a story about Ace. Oh Ace yeah. Well the, the my grandfather um there's a picture of me and him and he's holding me and he's got an ace of spades in his hands as, as like I'm as a uh, baby. So that was why I had, my logo was always ace. Like um, the story is yep. like ace, he's got ace in the hole. And then, um, so then when I, I just wanted to name my kid ace and Whitney was down for it. She loved it. It's yeah. bold names. It's a, uh, it's a good name and uh, <laughs> it, it should be exciting. Then we put RC as the middle name for I my love grandfather. That. So it's a, uh, it's a pretty cool name. How did you guys meet? Uh, so it first started, I saw her at the track um, <laughs> and my, previous bus driver which is now my bus driver again was hanging out with uh all the monster girls <laughs> and i literally just hit him up and was like hey what's going on over there and he was like mind your own business and uh, i was like okay <laughs> so i figured out um who she was from one of her pictures and i also did some creeping on uh twitter i think and so i followed her but then i didn't get any kind of response or anything. I didn't get a message back. She didn't slide in my DMs, but I hit up <laughs> my buddy Clay Greenfield. Wait, you so you go? You didn't series. respond to him, Whitney? I no. don't even think I sent her a message. I just followed her. I was playing it pretty yeah. cool, waiting for like the follow back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> instead of like waiting, I just did some more research and found out that uh, actually kind of connected through my buddy Tim Duggar that she was a Titans cheerleader yeah. because he was living in Nashville. And he told me that Clay Greenfield had just, uh, who I ran truck series with, was good buddies with, had just uh, married another Titans cheerleader. So I hit up Clay. I was like, hey, man, after all those years. Dude, of, like, you were you, in. Like, you were oh, yeah. aggressive. We had a lot of mutual friends. That's what was so weird. Like, we've never crossed paths before that, but we had a lot of mutual Let friends. Let me finish the story. Sorry. So I hit up Clay. <laughs> You're like, ladies, and, please. Uh, Clay was like, um, I was like, man, I need like a favor. Like I helped you with setups a little bit here and there, told you what we did in the trucks. I need you to put in a good word for me with Whitney. And he was like, oh, dude, I'm on it. And Tandra was his wife. They were close friends on the team. And um, Tandra said, hey, I know this really good guy. You should at least take him up on a, a date. So uh, we ex they exchanged our numbers. We started talking on the phone, which is cool. We weren't like texting or anything. So I talked to her on the phone for the first time. It was actually, we were talking like right around Daytona when I wrecked, had the bad wreck. Yeah. And oh. um, her first race was uh, Kentucky. I was living in Nashville at the time, so Kentucky was just like an hour. And she would time. not come without like yeah. her whole squad. Yeah, I had to bring all of my friends. So, so how many brought, was in the squad? It was like. Oh, well, it's only two girls. Yeah, it was Meryl and her other friend, Brittany. And they came to Kentucky. And the first, we were walking around. I'm like showing them the Xfinity race. And. Um, we're walking back to the bus, and Mar I hear Meryl whisper to her, and she goes, are we at the Kentucky Derby? Uh, I just have to say, though, no, none of my friends had ever watched NASCAR. Nobody knew about NASCAR. We didn't talk about it. <laughs> we didn't even really know what was going on. Like, I knew that there was cars involved, but we just so happened to be, I think, in the infield. We saw a lot of mud, and I was like, we might be. I don't know. I just wish we were hanging out right now because I have so many questions and this is so. Oh, like, honestly, the stories are really. really hey, so that nice. same night in Kentucky, like after the Xfinity race, the, the girls, we, we had this like big party in my bus. And they're doing cheers in the bus. We're doing like our dances. So I have some of the guys in the pit crew come <laughs> hang out. He did the magic mic dance. Yeah. It was love at first sight, honestly. Like, so, that was the, when the he did best the weekend of my life. Yeah. When he did the magic mic dance, that was like Yes, a, when he did the dance, I was like, I mean, he took the shirt off and he did the whole nine yards. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is my husband. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I swear. Actually, after I met his mom, that was like the, yeah. I needed to meet his family. And when I met Tina, I was like, I looked at Muriel and I was like, mm, it's my husband. She was like, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about her? Tina? 
I was expecting like a really overbearing, crazy mother-in-law um, or like mom. And when I met her, she is the sweetest, most down to earth, genuine person, especially mama that I had ever met. And I just immediately clicked with her. Like we immediately exchanged phone numbers and everything was just so easy and it just felt so right. And so, you know, it just, I just knew. Austin, you said something that I wanted to follow up on. You said that you knew it, you loved it because she didn't know anything about racing. Like why, why is that something that you were excited about? I just thought it was cool, you know, and, and she, uh, she's a cheerleader like, at heart. So like the first night, like I ran like 16th in that race and cup race. I was kind of bummed after her and she was like, man, I wanted to get on that radio and tell you like, let's go, you're doing good. And, and it was just like, <laughs> I like, almost did. My friend Brittany knew a little bit about racing, so she knew. Somebody had told us, like, don't touch this radio. You can listen, but do not touch it because this is like a team radio. If you click it, you're going to talk to the entire <laughs> that team. That could have been awesome. And so I had that in my head, and I'm a little bit of a rule breaker. So I was like, <laughs> he, he didn't he, touch it. He also. was like dogging himself, like, oh, and I was like, if I'm like, I'm going to pick this up and be like, you can do it. Come on. <laughs> But I didn't. That's what sold my mom on her too, because she was <laughs> pumped about the race and and um, yeah. So that's kind of how the story goes. And then we actually that same night we were dancing and all. I made her watch. Uh, I made all of us watch. Uh, oh. uh, what was it? Uh, Days, Days of Thunder. And I was trying to show her the draft and part. No. And she goes, <laughs> y'all. Okay, at first, I have never. I didn't know anything about cars. <laughs> oh, but she. Was you so mean like with a sugar this packet? What she says to me. Yeah. This is what she says to me though. She, I was like, oh, we got to watch this one part in Days of Thunder. It's like about the draft. And she goes, oh, honey, I know what the draft is. I'm yeah. in the NFL. <laughs> and I was like, do what? And I and, was so uh, confident. I was like, what? I was like, no, not that draft. She was like, oh, what, the military draft? I was like, oh, the like, army draft? <laughs> I was like, okay, we're going to start from the beginning. This is great. And even when I watched it, I was like, I don't get it. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> right. They're like lining up. Wow. I had to learn racing, but now I'm a crazy race fan. I'm in this thing. <laughs> That's so cool. It's funny because as you guys are sitting here talking, I'm like, you, it, it's so obvious the connection, the chemistry and the energy you guys have, but you're right. Cause you sort of Austin, do you feel like you're more of an introvert or no? Cause you don't seem it at all. No, no, no I'm not no. an introvert, but I just, I just try and keep things, you know, one side of, performance and the yeah. racing side and business i think i'm so like Woo, let's have a good time that he has to be like that rock in our relationship otherwise we if the we were both like that it would just not be good yeah, so we'd never get anything done nothing would get done well my favorite part of this talk here is that uh you basically used a setup to get a setup right as you were talking like <laughs> yeah. your connection with the the driver you said you helped with setups right like you were calling yeah. him with it anyway okay all right much more to come we've got more questions here that whitney dillon is one of a kind and in just a few weeks they're going to welcome a brand new one of a kind baby boy named ace coming up next we're going to talk about how austin and whitney are preparing for parenthood stay with us It's pretty obvious that Austin and Whitney have a lot of fun together as a couple, but let me tell you, I can speak from experience here and say that in a couple weeks when that beautiful baby boy arrives, things are gonna get interesting. I wanted to find out exactly how these two are preparing. Okay, Austin and Whitney, um, so now I wanna talk a little bit more about the baby, baby Ace on the way. What have you guys been planning? What kinds of things have you been doing to get ready for Ace's arrival? Well, we live in a barn, yeah. so it's kind of tough. Um, we were building a house before all this happened, so I just kind of put the stop to the house building until we go back racing so I get a paycheck to, to build this house. <laughs> but um, right now we're planning on, um, you know, we got the barn, but we might actually rent a house right here near my, my parents to right after we have Ace. Yeah. So um, we got my grandmother, with, well, my mom and her mom, two grandmas, will be able to help Whitney while we're racing. Um, what do you, are you, was the plan not to be in the barn when the baby was born or was it always kind of figure it out? The plan is, uh, <laughs> just make it happen. I don't yeah. know. We, we, we haven't is, had a real good plan as far as like, we're rolling with it. Honestly. We have some cool presents that people have sent though for the yeah. baby ace. Um, oh, like what? We got a, 
really awesome throw from a fan the other yeah. day. The NASCAR fans and community, they are amazing. They're just getting on my registries and they're buying what? gifts for us and they're just sending them and people are making these amazing blankets and just that, that is a cool what, blanket. It said Ace had his name on it. Ace RC Dylan had RCR and all this stuff like on it. Three. It was, it was just I was working out and she was like, you got to get home. You got to get home. I was like, oh no, what? And she's like, just come on now, get home. And I, it was a blanket, but it was an awesome blanket. But I was freaking out at first. She, I was like, like you brought me home. This. This. <laughs> it's yeah. the best present ever. <laughs> but that's from fans. That's, that's incredible yeah. that they're doing that. Wow. That goes to it's show really the power cool. of the sport, right? And the fan reach. Right. Um, all right, we're gonna play a little game here, him or her baby edition. Okay, so I'm gonna oh, ask I'm you, yeah, I'm gonna throw out a, an aspect of parenthood and I want you guys to use your fingers, point to the one who is gonna fulfill that duty based on <laughs> how you are. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Who is gonna be the one to change baby boy Dylan's extra smelly diapers? You think you? Yeah. Oh, well, him, yeah. <laughs> take it. That's awesome. That doesn't bother yeah, you. Well, yeah. I just know that late at night when Gucci has to pee, which she's pregnant, I have to take her out. So I'm figuring I'm going to have to take out the baby's diaper. Well, and we're not racing. So when we're racing and stuff like that, I'll take Gucci out. But I've been lazy. It's my third trimester. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, my God. You get a pass. You get a pass. All right. Yeah. Waking up at 3 a.m. with the baby. I would say me. You got to race. Yeah, I don't know. Race weekends, her, and then me during the week. Yeah. Because I'm planning compromise. on like playing video games. Yeah, while he's going to sneak kid. out and play the video games. Well, I, yeah, I already know the plan. <laughs> well, okay, this next question I'm confused about now because of something that Austin said earlier. Which one of you is going to teach him how to dance? Uh, me. I think I will. Probably Austin. Really? I mean, I'm, I'm the guy, I don't know. She'll be in there. She, she, if yeah. we have a girl, I mean, this she's going to take over. That's cool. Um, okay, who's going to sing him to sleep? Hmm. Me. What do you think? Do you think you? Well, you have a voice like thing. an angel. <laughs> I can't sing, but that's okay. He won't know that. Who, who do you leave it to to teach him about the birds and the bees? Oh, I'll probably have that conversation. Yeah, right? I'm gonna leave that to dad because it's a boy. If it was a girl, I'd do it. I remember my dad's <laughs> birds and the bees conversation. Really? So I could just repeat that one. Oh. And I'll be fine. We might need to talk about that before. <laughs> my yeah. dad did a good job. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question about him or her. Um, so are which one of you will let him get a tattoo? Or will oh, you I let will. him get a tattoo? Well, Whitney won't because her saying is you can't put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari. Well, I'm a girl. Boys are different. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've only got a, a butt tattoo. So, I mean, if he wants to get a butt tattoo, I can't tell him no. I think I'll be okay with tattoos. Everyone <laughs> in my family has them. Um, but my grandfather, know. though, his, his, his great-grandpa yeah. will probably be like, I don't know. My grandpa has a tattoo. Yeah, Mike has it's funny a tattoo. about that. My dad has a tattoo. RC. My grandpa has a tattoo. They both have tattoos on an arm. Just as long as he has it in a good spot, they'll be fine. Yeah. What is what are their what are their tattoos? Your dad and your granddad. <laughs> My dad, we call his the chicken hawk. It was supposed to be an eagle, and it was messed up, so he like covered it up with a big bird. It looks better now. It's got like. Um, mine and Ty's like birthday or our year that we were born in the claw of the eagle. And then my grandfather has a bird also. And it's it's kind of like an eagle looking thing on his arm. I think they both kind of have a bird on their on their. What, uh, does it symbolize something? Arm. Maybe freedom, America. I don't know. I, I need to ask him. I really never talked to him. I know my dad's was like, they were young and they went to this <laughs> Tattoo Joe is the name of it. It was like a van that he went and got a tattoo in. And it's called Tattoo Joe. Yeah. So he had to get it like covered up and he got a really nice one in New Hampshire, like covered it up and like now it looks good. But my grandpa's is really old school too. I have to ask him about his. It's like an old, older looking one. It's and cool. yours is Daytona 500, right? Yeah, butt tattoo, the logo is Daytona 500 and I got the wolf, wolf pack, pack on there too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So many questions. Um, before I let you go, listen, I mean, we know you guys have a lot more going on than, than a lot of other couples involved in racing because you're waiting on your baby boy. Um, but is there anything, Austin, that you would want to share with race fans, whether it's about this time, something that you've realized, or just about the sport in general and, and the impact of those fans? Well, I just, I can't wait to see our fans back at the track again, uh, get to interact with them. Uh, you, you go and you take things for granted, really. I mean, this is a, it's a good time to kind of reflect and, and start over and, and really, you know, you're just excited to be back at the track and, and do what we do. You know, I, I enjoy starting our year off at Daytona, the 500. There's nothing like that and seeing the people out there. And, and um, I can't wait till we get it back, you know, get to, to enjoy the time with our fans and, um, just racing in general, getting out there. and Even the people I don't like at the track, I'm going to like, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, who don't never... you like at the track? Uh, lots of people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We bring our friends to the track. We... <laughs> no, I mean, our whole deal, I'm just saying that things that you don't like, if you did have things that you didn't like, you're going to love. I mean, yeah. it just makes you appreciate everything about it. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, I get to, to do this, this NASCAR thing. Yeah. It's, it's a crazy life. Like, going on the road every weekend it's a traveling circus but uh we uh I, I miss it you know I just miss being at the track and and in that routine that we get in and um the fans are, are awesome in NASCAR it's cool you see what they've done for iRacing um I mean the ratings have been great for iRacing so they want to see us out there we got to get back out there and, and that's what I'm most excited about awesome all right guys you're the best thank you so much Whitney thank, thank you. you for joining us Thanks for having me. Okay, good luck. Good luck the rest of the way. Right. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> I think we all miss the circus we call NASCAR, but talk about a fun interview. Austin and Whitney, they're going to be the best parents. So much fun to be around, and I can't wait to see baby ace RC Dylan at the racetrack in the fall. Until then, I'm going to continue to bring you these conversations, taking you behind the scenes with your favorite drivers as we wait to get back on track. You can see it every night on Race Hub at 6 p.m. on FS1. I'm Lindsay Zarniak. Thanks so much for watching.